So today we're here at Swinton Motorcycles testing out the uh, Apico factory racing Husqvarna bikes. Um, you know, we've got the, the FC450 and also the TC252 stroke. We've got, um, we've got some ECUs to test uh, and we've got Golf Racing Fuel as well. So really looking forward to that. We've got Mark here from Golf. So he's gonna, you know, we're gonna quiz him on a few things, obviously Dylan. And, um, you know, we're here with the main man himself, which is, you know, Ashley seems to be um, a man after my own heart, being a massive two-stroke fan. So I'm, I'm sure we're gonna be talking squish head volume and uh, looking forward to spending some time in the dino room. The thing with petrol station fuel is, is with the new changes that have happened, as we're all aware of the E10, you're not giving your bike now what is the best or your car what is the best. As we've all seen the reports of E10 uh, being less fuel efficient and some cars not being able to use it. With the race fuel in the can, every time you open the can, you know exactly what you're getting. So your tuner can tune to complete consistency every time and you know that it's completely reliable. You, it hasn't come out of a rusty Jera can, it, it, exactly as it should be. And what it does is all the money you've spent on the rest of your machine, be it the suspension, be it all the engine work, you've, you've put excellence into everything else. So now really is the right time to put excellence into the fuel tanks as well and make that a full part of your racing program. You could pour it in and see something, but to gain the best for every penny you've spent everywhere else and on the fuel, you need to just put that bit of extra work in and you really will feel the difference. Yeah, so today we're here with uh, Apica Husqvarna uh, running the 102 through their 450 machine and their 250. We're just spending some time making sure everything's where it needs to be and again extracting everything we can with the combination of all of the components that are used and making sure the, use, the race fuel brings out the best in everything that they have. On the first pulls when we had the ECU in and then we put the race fuel in, the, the smiles coming out as they were walking out of the dyno room kind of really told the whole story. There didn't need to be a conversation. There was smiles here from here. <laughs> <laughs> you can't half feel the difference when you're riding that because even with the, the really good ECU on, you can still feel the fade off. That wants to keep pulling with that fuel just wants to keep going. It looked like your initial hit as well. The was initial better. hit was faster. Because it was no like bu -bu 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 yeah, It was smoother off the throttle. You could hear the difference. You could feel it when you rolled it. And that's just the, the 102, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, because it's you, it's allowing you to come yeah. in a lot earlier. If you come in earlier, it's cleaner at the bottom. Yeah. So pleased that we've been able to have such a strong result. And I know that result will be the same for everybody that went and made the move and put the time to make this decision. Uh, we've done some dyno runs, back-to-back -back dyno runs with pump fuel, race fuel, uh, standard ECUs uh, and CDIs and the GET ECU uh, and CDI. So we've done some back-to-back -back testing uh, and we can see the combination of the, the uh, GET ECU and the race fuel is going to give us some uh, massive performance gains. I was hoping for sm small improvements, but I have to say, uh, in particular on the 450, we've, we've seen some massive improvements. Um, you know, much, much nicer power delivery, uh, overall performance. Uh, yeah, it was, it was mind blowing, to be honest with you. There was so much improvement. Uh, and I understand now that, you know, with the race fuels, uh, the advantages you get, not just in terms of overall performance, but, you know, it, it will enable you to get uh, better engine uh, wear. Uh, which you know is better, better, better engine life really. So yeah, it's, it's really exciting for us. You know, you touched on a few things earlier regarding the E10. 
Well, I can only go by what I've seen. Um, it, it's an inefficient fuel compared to, to E5. And it, it doesn't like carburetted motorcycles. They're, they're not designed to run on it. It's hydroscopic, so it attracts moisture. So if you've got a slightly older motorcycle, you're going to be hitting issues where the fuel tank is going to rust. Simple as that. You add, you add water to metal, it rusts. Yeah. Uh, it also, it's got a tendency to make plastic porous. So if you've got a plastic fuel tank, you're going to end up with issues of eventually it will become porous. The, the, also, the problem that hasn't turned up yet, but it will come, is storage. The motorcycles that are kept with the E10 over winter, they're going to be difficult to get back up and running, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. And it's an inefficient fuel, but we're being made to run it under the guises of so let's save the planet. Today we've obviously we've been testing uh, a lot of different things. So we had the, the Husky uh, FC450 um, and we, we tried a few different products there, didn't we, to get ignition, yeah. uh, which was an improvement, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. But the combination of the two, the fuel and the ignition, you know, I think we both... I think we were both shocked at we the was, improvements, right? because we was, looked at one another and both his eyebrows raised the, and went, the, wow. Yeah, like... like stop um, bike, stop fuel, race fuel, race ECU. Mm. Look at that. Mm. I, was, I, was, I was surprised, and there ain't much that surprised me. You, you've seen, I've been doing it long enough, you see little gains here, little gains here. I call it squinting. Yeah. You're squinting and you're looking for the little gains. But it was massive in your face right from the get-go, right the way from as low as the bike would pull, it, it would pull lower, a good 500 RPM lower. Right the way through the range, it, it was just, it was quite a shot. Yeah, it was massive, wasn't it? Yeah, that it over was. That over-rev, was... That over-rev, yeah. And, and like you said, the pickup as the well. The pickup, how clean it was off the bottom was was quite a, <laughs> quite a shock to me. Yeah, normal pump fuel, run yeah. it out. Straight in with the, was it 102? 102, yeah. 102, instant. But the, you know, the, the CDI there, it had been uh, tweaked to this yeah. fuel, hadn't we? So, so it wasn't just a case of it was a, you know, pull straight off the shelf jo yeah. cut job, was it? The, yeah, the fuel was, but the, the, the get ignition obviously had been set up as well, as it should for the race fuel. But, but I think as well, the base map that was in that was absolutely, there's a lot of development gone into that base map. It was so good straight out of the case. Yeah. Normally, you can see where you can make improvements just by looking at the graph. Straight away, you could see that I'd had a lot of R&D time on that graph, yeah. on that ignition timing, everything. There'd been a lot of time spent on it that. It was job done, wasn't it? It was rolled, yeah. it was rolled a bike off, let's yeah. go and have a, yeah, it was job and done. Have a cup of tea. Yeah, it was job it? done, because I was willing to think, right, I'm sure I could improve that by doing... And, and straight out of the box, I thought, that's a cracking good map, Matt. Yeah. yeah. a lot of R&D time going into that. But, um, but yeah, you, you're, normally, you know, you're normally working on uh, road race bikes then? Yeah, road yeah. race. Uh, t to be fair, the majority of the stuff is the, the road lads. The, the, the bikes come out from the factory physically. They can't run properly because they're not allowed to with the emissions restraints on them. So once you get into the ECU, you can put that bike to how Suzuki, Kawasaki, Yamaha originally wanted that bike to go. You better fuel economy, more horsepower, more mid-range, more torque, smoother running, easier start-up. It's just a win-win. No, no. I've just asked me if I could be a dealer for golf. I said, because it, it did exactly what it said on the tin. I was shocked. Is it worth the extra money? It is to a certain point, provided the, the race fuel is within the budget of the average man like, like we are, then race fuel every time, because it's just better for the engine, you've got less maintenance costs, so that's offsetting the, the extra cost of the fuel, yeah. straight away. Plus you've got your reliability issues, you've got consistency, you know, because you can buy fuel from one petrol station and then you go and buy it from another, it's completely different. Yeah. So you've got that consistency and that's what you need for a race machine. You've got a brand new tin when you buy it. It's brand new, it's never been used. It's clean, it's immaculate. You go to a petrol station with your 10 year old jerry can that's got all, whatever's in there, in there. Yeah, yeah. In your fuel tank it goes. But with this, it's brand new. It's straight out at refinery, isn't it? It's got to be right. Uh, so the average kind of Super Plus, I guess, is going to be like 98, 99, that you're available to buy from the pump. Our racing 102 is exactly that. It's a 102 Octane uh, with, with an oxygen content added to it. It's unleaded. Um, so some of the really older Evo bikes, they do benefit possibly from a bit of lead, but there are, you could add a lead additive to it. So it's available from several places. Uh, it comes in 50 litres or 25 litre cans. Uh, 
uh, UK distributor and importer, Classic Oils. You can contact them, they'll be able to ship it out to you. Uh, Matt Gardner is doing a great a lot of support for us within the British Motocross Championship. He's taking pre-orders and he's bringing the fuel to the tracks to sell and delivering the pre-orders for the riders. We, we see a lot of potential within the motorsport in general, particularly the motocross sector. We're very active within that last year and we're going to be moving forward again this year and the year after. We've launched a couple of programmes to help support the riders and support the sport in general. So the golf is giving something back for everything that we're trying to do uh, for the community. We're fully back in the British Championship again this year. Um, we're working with several of the teams within it now, uh, and we think it's going to be an exciting year.